everyone. I'm Roger Venables with the Aviation Department. And tonight I have the privilege of presenting to you the 2022 uh, bond program, the election scheduled for May 7th of this year. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the program goals. These are our set out objectives, if you will. Our strategy and highlights from the bond program, the selection process itself, we'll review that. And then, of course, the City Council's approved projects, the five propositions that will be on the ballot, and, of course, the bond program scheduled moving forward. So taking a look at our program goals, this is what we always look back to as a test. It's our litmus test, if you will. That once we've developed a program, we go back and review it against these, these stated goals. So we want to maintain and improve existing infrastructure and address equity. We want to provide mobility and city services in those growth areas. I mean, the 2020 census revealed that we had about a 24% growth rate since 2010 over that 10-year span. Particularly in the northwest sector of the city, we had a 76% growth rate. So we're still actively growing. Enhanced our active transportation recreational corridors, allow for some flexibility and partnership opportunities. And of course, achieve balance and fiscal stewardship, trying to balance our operating and our capital budget. We want to make sure if we build something new, we've got operating and maintenance costs that are going to go along with the life of that facility. So we either got to staff it, keep the lights on, et cetera. A little bit about our strategy. On the capital delivery side, we dedicated about $29.8 million specifically to transportation and park. Park being a small portion of that related to the uh, uh, design elements for the Forest Park pool replacement. But the balance of this would go towards our arterial projects, where we can go out and do some early design work, secure some right-of-way, at least know where that right-of-way is at so we can better accelerate the delivery of this capital. Because we still have Encore and other franchised utilities that need to relocate and move out of the way before we even get started. Our debt capacity, we've still got some debt capacity beyond the $560 million that's programmed for this uh, 2022 bond program. But we need to preserve some. We're going to have emergency situations. We'll have partnership opportunities that will come up outside of the bond cycle. We also might have grant match opportunities that we need to capitalize on. Some of the highlights, well, we've got $365 million programmed for streets and mobility. In addition to that, we have $71.6 million that came from Tarrant County bond funds. Tarrant County had a, su a successful election in November of last year and committed to four arterial projects that we were going to do, so together we're going to do them, and one grade separated railroad crossing. We've got another $59.8 million that comes from other funding sources the city had. Together, almost a half a billion dollars worth of streets and mobility improvement projects. On the park side, we've got $121 million in the bond program. Combine that with $13.2 million that we've got from partnership funds from third parties, another $3.9 million from other funding sources. Together, $138 million worth of park improvements and no tax rate increase associated with this program. So how do we get here? How does a project get developed? Well, it comes from many different areas. Data collection and analysis. We're collecting data on a daily basis. We're looking at pavement condition indexes. We're looking at facility condition index. Where are these infrastructure in, the, in terms of their life cycle? Master plan and strategic goals guidance documents, tells us how our capital planning needs to take place over the next 5, 10, 20 years. Development activity that's occurring. City Council will waitlisted projects from previous bonds that didn't quite make it, ranked high, but we're putting forward on future bond programs. Service demands, public meetings, neighborhood meetings, boards and commissions, all that goes into play when developing a project. The selection process, we started with $1.3 billion worth of projects, so somehow we had to get that down to a $500 million program. That's what we initially started at. So we asked the departments, submit us your projects. It goes to a prioritization committee. That committee is made up of individuals from different departments around the city that are the first filter, if you will, of prioritizing those projects. We asked the departments, tell us how much it's going to cost, right? When do you need it delivered by? Are there O&M expenses associated with your project? So is it a new facility or expanding facility that will have additional operating and maintenance costs? The committee will take a look at that across the spectrum with about 10 applied criteria. One criteria that we used for this bond program that was absent from 2018 was equity. So we looked no further than the Fort Worth race, uh, 
the Task Force on Race and Culture for inspiration on how we could answer that or best address equity. So we asked the basic questions, really simple. Does the project eliminate or reduce racial and cultural disparities? Does it lie within or adjacent to a majority-minority area or super-majority-minority area? Majority-minority area is really just a census block with a minority population of 50% or greater. A super-majority-minority area is one that's 75% or greater. And of course, we applied all the other criteria. Does it collaborate with other projects? Are they sharing resources? Are there leverage opportunities? This one, we had a significant amount of leverage opportunity from the county. Does it address service delivery? Do we have deficiencies that need to be addressed? Is it a capital replacement, something that's gone beyond its useful life? Does it address health and safety concerns? Are there state or federal or contractual mandates that require us to add additional funding for the bond program? And of course, we take all that to management with our first shot at prioritization for their look at it, asking more questions, filtering process even more, and then ultimately on to city council. City council will review and provide some input on what's presented to them, and ultimately say, let's take it out to the community and let's get some feedback. And so we did, spent the latter part of last summer, early fall, doing just that. And of course, the final project list is developed. And in February 8th of this year, uh, city council approved an ordinance calling for the election. So subsequent to the public input, we realized heavy emphasis on arterials, especially added capacity projects. More importantly, all our streets and mobility, heavy on everybody's mind. So we added $45.5 million to what was scheduled to be a $500 million bond program. Park and recreation improvements, $8.1 million. You know, principally to the Forest Park Pool replacement of stop six aquatic facilities, essentially enlarging those facilities. Increased funding for the Botanic Gardens. And of course, we added another project, Oak Grove Park. And then on the facility side, we added $3.6 million, principally to land acquisition. We've seen costs over the last couple of years continue to rise, and we wanted to account for that, related to two fire station replacements. So today, we're at $560 million bond program, two thirds of which goes to streets and mobility infrastructure improvements. Another quarter of it to uh, park and recreation improvements and the rest dispersed to police and fire, public library, and then our natural area and open space. So what you'll see on the ballot is it'll be titled Fort Worth Proposition A. It'll be streets and mobility infrastructure improvements at $369 million. The map just kind of identifies the location of where those, uh, those key uh, arterial projects Great separated crossing, the established corridors in our neighborhood streets. So what our emphasis is, is added network capacity for arterials and intersections, sidewalks, bicycle lanes, safety improvements, key focus, neighborhood school safety, our high injury network or Vision Zero program, bridges, street lights, and then again, maintaining and improving our existing network of established corridors, upgrades to traffic signals, and our neighborhood street rehabilitation program. This gives you the list by project category, and along with the associated funding uh, of in, highlighted in green on the $369 million. Tarrant County, as I mentioned earlier, 71.6. And then, of course, those other funds from sources this, uh, funding the city already had in transportation impact fees, future improvement agreements, uh, previous bonds at 59.8, and again to $497 million. So highlighted in green on this chart are the added capacity. We started out with nine arterial projects. We've moved to 14. So we've added five out of the public meetings. And you can see the 2022 bond fund amount at about 145 million. Add in the Tarrant County. Add in the other funding sources. We added uh, Bailey Boswell from 157 to Horseman Road. Now, some of these are going to be designed and right away only. We want to be able to design the project, select, and secure the right of way. So if we know that in advance, we're able to accelerate delivery of this project sooner rather than later. You can go to the city's website, and there'll be additional detail about each one of these projects. 
This map just shows you the arterial projects that are planned. It's only showing the north half of the city. Again, that's where we're seeing the highest amount of growth and the highest need for our arterial projects. Intersections, again, centralized down to the southwest. Our established corridors to support transit, we've got $10 million assigned to uh, Lancaster Avenue between Jones Street and Hanley Drive. And these are really just corridor improvements that we want to focus on pedestrian and bicycle, really the interface between the vehicular traffic and all other modes of transportation. Same with East Berry and McCart Avenue, two and a half million dollars for each, really for design only, but we may have an opportunity to also collect some right of way along the way. On safety and mobility, our Vision Zero program, really what we're trying to do here is take those fatalities to zero. So we want to reduce those severe injuries or fatalities, take them to zero, hence the name Vision Zero program. Five million dollars dedicated to that effort. It would be to address all modes of transportation, from pedestrian, bicycle, to vehicular, in those top 10 corridors. We know where they're at. We have the statistics for those. The question is, what type of improvements can we make in each one of those corridors? So we have a consultant that's helping out our transportation and public works with determining the type of improvements that could be made within those corridors, again, to reduce those fatalities to zero. Everman Parkway connector, south end of town. This is connecting 35 to Everman. There's a stretch of roadway in there that the county has agreed to participate in at about $13.5 million. So it's a design of a four-lane divided thoroughfare. Most importantly, though, it's a grade separated crossing of the Union Pacific Railroad. A little bit, too, at Sycamore Creek, which also runs through there. Fort Worth Proposition B is park and recreation improvements. And again, the map just kind of shows you the general disbursement of those projects around the city. Again, Fort Worth Proposition B, these are the project types, totaling up to 123955000 Now, it also includes the public art component. So for transportation projects, it'd be 1% for all other propositions with the exception of natural space and uh, natural area and open space, which has no public art participation. And you can see the partnership funds at about $13.2 million. The other funds, the $2 million, would be some gas well revenue, another $486,000 for um, park with park dedication fees. What's interesting is when we added Oak Grove, we took $3 million from the planned $5 million project for Sycamore Park. We added it to Oak Grove. In doing so, we came back in with $2 million worth of funding from gas well revenue, again, to bring the total project cost up to about $4 million. We added another 486000 to the $3 million that we added to Oak Grove to bring it to $3.4 million. So Botanic Garden Infrastructure Improvements. A couple of years ago, we entered into an agreement with Botanic Research Institute of Texas, a contractual obligation when they're from now on going to maintain and operate the Botanic Gardens. When we turned it over to them, we turned it over to them with infrastructure that was degrading or at the end of its useful life. We committed in that contract to put forward in future bond programs funding to help replace some of those aging infrastructure. This is $7 million to help with that effort. Heritage and Paddock Park renovation and site improvements. Heritage Park sits on the north end of the downtown, the convergence of Main Street. If you go out there today, it's got a chain link fence around it. Can't even access the park. We need to go back in and do substantive design and reconstruction of those improvements along with Paddock Park and some streetscape improvements so we can make it more pedestrian friendly environment and integrate that with the park. Fort Worth Water Gardens, built in 1971, has undergone some limited renovations over the years. Uh, but what's happened is a lot of that vegetative growth out there and those root systems have found their way into the plumbing, the filtration system, the electrical systems, and degraded those. Things that you don't, you can't see, they're below ground, but are in desperate need of renovation or replacement. And that's six and a half million dollars to that effort. Our drainage and erosion control and pond dredging projects, about 7.1 million dollars. You can see the disbursement of the, of the projects around the city. This is a significant dam replacements or pond dredging. You know, some of this we use for stormwater detention. As that thing silts up, it reduces our stormwater carrying capacity. 
this again comes back in and drains, uh, removes some of the sediment. Meadowbrook Golf Course renovation, much like we did with uh, Rockwood Golf Course from the 2014 bond, we want to go back in and improve playability of the golf course by adjusting tees, fairways, looking at some drainage improvements out there as well, golf cart, paths, et cetera. We've got the Sycamore Park improvements that I mentioned earlier at $2 million, but again, there's additional funding from gas well revenue of another $2 million that'll be added to this. And that's the design and construction of those master plan park amenities. Sycamore Park was formerly Sycamore Golf Course. It was decommissioned about three, almost four years ago now. Went through a master planning effort in 2020. And so we've got a master plan park. Now we want to come back in and, and construct some of those uh, traditional community park improvements from trails, picnic facilities, security lighting, et cetera. Oak Grove Park. Oak Grove Park was purchased by the city in 2015. It's undeveloped. So this would go to, it's about 67 acres. So this would go to master planning, design, and construction of that park amenities. Stop six aquatic facility, $8.2 million. This would be a public pool, be located to the, uh, adjacent to the Stop Six Hub Community Center. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But this is design and, and construction of an outdoor aquatic facility. Uh, we, we went from four to eight lanes, this outgrowth of the public, uh, uh, public meetings. They wanted to see a, a larger public pool. Same with Forest Park pool replacement. We've just started into the design phase of that Forest Park pool replacement. It was clear that the public wanted a larger pool, something more akin to what uh, is out there today. Uh, so we enlarged it, lengthening the uh, length of the length of the pools and adding, I believe, four more lanes to get to eight. Echo Lake Park improvements. We acquired this from the county. 2017, they gave us the property, and what they gave us was a bunch of uh, deteriorating infrastructure, a lot of playgrounds that weren't ADA compliant. This is to come back in and take that 41 acres and master plan and design and construction of our typical park amenities. It sits adjacent to our Worth Heights Community Center today. Gateway Park development, this is the continuation of the uh, Gateway Park uh, development. This will be an update to the master plan. We'll come back in with uh, athletic fields, trails, skate park, uh, some security lighting, some redoing some parking lots, et cetera. Neighborhood park improvements, we have eight. So these are park reserves. These are undeveloped tracts of land that we've acquired over the years uh, that need to be developed at some point in time with a park, with a neighborhood park. So this would be master planning, design, and construction of park amenities. One of which, uh, West Haven Park, and I'll point it out, is one that was formerly Van Zant YMCA. We ended up acquiring that from the YMCA, removing the pool and other infrastructure out there. This is to come back in and, and master plan and develop it as a neighborhood park. Martin Luther King Park. <clears throat> right now, MLK Community Center sits on this property. It's about 2.8, I think it's about 2.86 acres. Uh, we are going to remove Martin Luther King Community Center. We're going to redevelop where it's at today with a park, uh, it is going to be replaced with the Stop Six Hub Community Center. Stop Six Hub Community Center, $17.5 million. It's a 28,000 square foot community center. Uh, it's going to be your traditional community center with all the recreational components to it, but we're going to add something. We're going to add a library to it. We're going to add space for uh, social services for some of those providers. It's more of a one-stop shop, if you will, for the community. Fire Station Community Center was one of those in the 2018 that was between Diamond Hill and Forest Park, uh, Forest uh, <coughs> Fire Station Community Center replacement. They were kind of neck and neck. And so we decided to go ahead. All the things that were wrong with it before are still wrong with it today. Went ahead and put it on the 2022 bond program. So we've got a 1928 vintage fire station that's been added on to over the years, and it looks like it. You know, it's added on to it as, as you needed programming, et cetera. We got a second floor, can access. It's not ADA compliant. We can't use it for programming needs. So it just doesn't fit the model today of our community centers. When we take down portions of the fire station community center, we're going to pay respect to the 1928 vintage fire station, at least components of that, and integrate that into the new design. So our Fort Worth Zoo, I mentioned contractual obligations. Well, Fort Worth Zoological Society, we have a contract with. 
They put all the exhibits, they maintain the zoo, they operate the zoo. Our commitment under that contract is that we will provide funding for the construction of utility infrastructure to support their new exhibits. Trail gap connections, this will be citywide, about five and a half million dollars. Now there's three areas that we're, we're focusing on right now is Bomber Spur, Mistletoe Bridge to Forest Park, and Sycamore Creek Trail. Again, we're gonna take this five and a half million dollars, we're gonna to try to leverage it as much as we can with other third party agencies in order to maximize the amount of trail we can actually build. Over with Proposition C is a new public library in the far northwest of Fort Worth. What we're looking at is around Havendale Haslett at Sundara Ranch. In a three mile radius of where we're targeting for this library, we had 3,260 people call Fort Worth home within that three mile radius in a year of a pandemic. So that's what we gained in 2020. Right now within that three mile radius, we're bumping up on 20,000 people. So this would go to land acquisition, design and construction. We already have our, uh, our land identified for this project. So hopefully we can secure and close on that land quickly and get started with this project. For the proposition D is our police and fire public safety proposition. We've got one new police facility and two fire station replacements at $39.2 million. Fire station 37, we moved on to its current site. I think it's at 4971 uh, Ray Wright Road as a modular building. And then right adjacent to it, we built a metal building to hold the fire apparatus. Again, temporary building, moved on site in 1998. It's time to find it a permanent home. That's nine and a half million dollars. Fire station 16 replacement, a little over $10 million. Okay, this is about a 57 year old station that's at the end of its useful life. We've got the captain's quarters that actually is located in one of the fire apparatus bays. We've got the bay doors that we actually have to lower the suspension of the fire apparatus just to get it in the door. There's so many things wrong with it. We can't accommodate female firefighters with it. It's we can do no level of expansion or renovation to this building to make it right. You really just have to start all over again. So we're looking at putting it at a different location that meets the needs of the fire, uh, the fire department. So we've got some land dollars allocated for this project as well. Police Northwest Patrol Division, $18.6 million. We already own the property. It's about 66 acres. West of Meacham at 3900 Angle Avenue. This is to build a 32,000 square foot facility to centralize, if you will, the Northwest Patrol Division. Right now, portions of them are housed at Hemp Hill, portions in the downtown, portions in the stockyard, uh, and then of course, across or on the east side of the airfield. They pay about $151,000 a year in rent. They can take that, they're taking that out of their operating costs right now. They can take that 151,000 and put it to other resources. So it kind of liberates them, if you will, from that uh, from that lease obligation. Proposition E is our natural area and open space. So for 2021, the end of 2021, over the prior three years, we're losing 47 acres a week to development. That's Greenfield to development. In 2022, which is only six months old in our fiscal year, we've lost 1,440 acres to development. This $15 million is go to secure some of that property that's the most environmentally sensitive property that we have around the city to create an open space plan. We've already done that with a 50 acre purchase of Broadcast Hill. So many benefits associated with this. We can use it as passive recreational opportunities, improves air and water quality, et cetera. So here's a summary of propositions. I know I went through them really quickly uh, I would invite you to go online and get more detail about the 110 neighborhood rebuilt, uh, street rehabilitation projects to see if your street actually appears on that. If it does not, reach out to Transportation and Public Works. It may already be on another list for a street rehabilitation and not necessarily a part of this bond program. So Proposition A, Fort Worth Proposition A, Streets and Mobility Infrastructure, 369 million. Park and Recreation Improvements, Fort Worth Proposition B at 123. Public Library Improvements, Fort Worth Proposition C at 12 and a half. Police and Fire Public Safety Improvements, Fort Worth Proposition D, 39.3. And then of course, Natural Area and Open Space Proposition E. So moving forward, 
right? From this day, all the way up, really all the way up to the election, uh, we're gonna be holding a series of public information meetings. Uh, again, go to the website to determine where those might be in close proximity to you, and I encourage you to attend. Uh, April 25th is early voting. Again, there'll be more information on the website about where those locations are for early voting. May 7th is election day. So again, if you have any questions, I invite you again to visit the, uh, the city's website to get more detail on each one of these projects. <laughs>